Hey all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the South, more specifically, Cleveland, Georgia. Now then, the year 1983, Christmas. Bands of roaming parents armed with pitchforks and torches storm local shopping malls and toy stores searching for one thing the holy grail of toys that year the cabbage patch doll parents were willing to murder each other to mutilate kidnap destroy whatever it took so that their child could open a cabbage patch doll on Christmas morning. Now, what most people don't understand is that Cabbage Patch dolls actually have a long storied history here in the state of Georgia. Now the actual design of the doll, it's actually if you look at a Cabbage Patch doll, it's a very unique looking doll. They're actually based on Appalachian folk art. Uh, my wife grew up down here and you know the old ladies would sew. Uh, this was long, this was not long before 1983, but prior to 1983 when she was a small child, um, members of her family would sew her um, these dolls. She still has them. They look exactly like Cabbage Patch dolls. So it was a pretty much a f piece of folk art um, that hit mainstream and completely took off. The man responsible for the explosion that was the Cabbage Patch Dolls is a man named Xavier Roberts and he is from North Georgia, created his empire centered around the building you see behind me. This is where Cabbage Patch children are born. Babyland General Hospital. Now the old Babyland General Hospital, um, it was actually a real abandoned hospital um, not far from here. Recent years they've actually switched and, and built this plantation style building that now serves as a new hospital. A little, little less charming you know, it's more like an outlet store. It doesn't have quite the charm of the old abandoned hospital. But still, come here and you can see something that you can only see here. You see Cabbage Patch children are born here. Not born in the sense that they come from a human woman. See, Cabbage Patch children are born from a magic crystal tree and the magic crystal tree is inside this building and you can watch as a magical cabbage child is born from this magical crystal tree. Now if this all seems completely insane you may be onto something but I would recommend See, I am a 34-year-old man here at the Cabbage Patch Hospital. I recommend anyone who's anyone come out here and watch a Cabbage Patch child be born. It's an experience that you will never forget. Now let's go take a look. As you can see, the secondary market for Cabbage Patch dolls is still alive and well. It's all the dolls in this case that run around $15,000. Hi, I'm Dexter. All right, this little guy here named Thomas looks suspiciously like a Cabbage Patch version of Robert the Doll. Stand inside, the other way. Don't have
they move, but I can't figure out how or why. This one right here was moving just a second ago. I swear they only move when I turn my back. Just walking away. Oh, there they go. Did you see a move? I think I'm losing my mind. Now here's something you almost never see. An adult cabbage patch child. How come there's only one adult? How come none of the other cabbage patch children have become cabbage patch adults? Now there's actually this long standing rumor that Cabbage Patch children were created by the US government in order to normalize people to the effects of radiation for the upcoming nuclear war. That the Cabbage Patch kids represent what a child exposed to radiation in the womb would look like when born. So. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd say if we're all born in crystal trees, it's a fair trade off. As you can see, these babies are still in an incubator because their lungs did not fully develop inside the crystal tree. Hang in there, little guys. A crystal tree. Alrighty, 
Now, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give her a great big old dose of TLC. Does anyone know what TLC stands for? No. Anybody? Center loving care. You are so right. Are you a nurse? No, I'm a mom. And Same mom. difference, though, right? <laughs> okay, here at Babyland, we do believe in giving all of our babies mega, mega doses of tender loving care. Okay, I'm going to check Mother Cabbage. I'm going to see if she has dilated to 10 leaves apart. And she has. So, in checking her, I can see she's coming along really well. But we're going to have to help her a little bit with some breathing today, okay? So, if everybody would please take a deep breath in and let it out. Deep breath in and let it out. One more time. Big a deep breath in and let it out. All right. She's doing really good, but now we're going to have to help her a little bit with pushing, okay? But sir, I don't want you to actually push. We're just going to yell push as loud as we can. On the count of three. One, two, three. Push! You're doing a great job. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, push. One more time, and I think we'll have it. One, two, three, push. All right, I do see head first. If not, we would be having what we call a branch delivery. We could be here all night for that one. All right, here comes our baby girl. Wow, she says, hello, world. Okay, I'm going to wrap her up nice and snugly in her little blanket, and then I'm going to tell you all a few things about her. The very first thing that I did notice about her is the interns did remember to fertilize the patch really well last night because she is born with a tuft of hair. If they had forgot, guess what? She would have been cute, but she would have been bald. She's born with some big, old, gorgeous brown eyes. She's got this cute little outy belly button where I gently snipped her from other cabbage during the delivery. And she has a little Xavier Roberts birthmark on her little bottom, as all babies do here at Baby. Now, about three or four years ago, we had some interns come in and they wanted to plant some corn. So we finally got into them and told them, yeah, you can go ahead and plant your corn. So after they did, they come back and apologize and said, we're very, very sorry, but we accidentally planted our corn way too close to all your cabbage patches. So now because they did that, all of our babies here at Babyland are born with ears. <laughs> all right, which is a good thing, right? Now, this little girl is going to have to have a name. After we name her, I'm going to be taking her over to the newborn nursery to do a little checkup, and you're welcome to come and watch. But first of all, does anyone have a first name? No? Sarah? Okay, good name. What about a middle name? Anybody? Yes, ma'am? Sarah Marie? That's a... Uh-oh. She just said something. Let's see what she said. She learned to talk real early. <laughs> okay, I'll tell them. She said to tell you and you both, thank you so very much for such a beautiful name. And when she gets to be a big girl like both of y'all, she thinks she's just going to be a princess. Y'all give her a round of applause. It's her birthday. Yay! <laughs> She's laying her incubator. Laying her? Yeah. I guess her name's Sarah Marie. <gasps> like me? You're Sarah Elizabeth.
appreciate you all joining me for my trip to Babyland General Hospital. Please check out my website, www.carpetbagger.org. And now, I will leave you with the most beautiful thing I have ever filmed. <laughs> Where are the dancers going on?